Hi friends, you're like propped up on my laundry shelf. <laughs> I'm working on leverage to keep you there safely. I just wanted to chat with you this morning because I wasn't gonna start filming. Today I'm going to take Abby to another children's hospital location, the Seattle children's location over in Seattle. Last night or yesterday we went to one down south and then last week we went to the one in Bellevue and so now we've been to every single one of them <laughs> in the Seattle area. And those locations for me to go to, not a big deal. Like I don't mind the, the length of the drive yesterday was not that big a deal. And um, it was easy. The hospital was right off the highway, super easy to find. And then the one in Bellevue, I've been to a bajillion times and Bellevue doesn't stress me out. There's actually, do you need socks? <laughs> Let me find. So what I'm doing right now is I'm folding socks. So here you go. She's getting ready for school and I'm trying to get laundry in. In fact, let me get laundry in while we kind of chat here. So here's the thing. For whatever reason, going to the Seattle location stresses me out a lot because you have to go to Seattle. Now, normally the quickest route to get to this hospital is to take the toll bridge. There's two bridges that connect the east side to the west side over into Seattle and one of them has a toll bridge now. And so I normally don't take that one. We only took that one when we took Ashley to the hospital last year because it felt like we were in an emergency situation and traffic on the other bridge was too backed up. So we just did the toll, paid the toll like a month later, not a big deal. Today I can already see that there's traffic on the toll bridge. It's only three dollars to take the toll. It's not a big deal. Um, um, but the exit and the direction to get over to the hospital when you take the toll bridge stresses me out. I don't know why. I already know the directions. I already know how to get there. I don't know. And so I think I'm going to go through Seattle. You go over, you go directly west, we go over to Seattle, and then I'm going to go directly north and go over to Seattle Children. It's over by University of Washington, for those of you who know Seattle area. It just makes me stress, and I would much rather have Jason in the car with me. Even if I was driving, having him in the car with me, telling me where to go, I know how to follow directions. It just, for whatever reason, going to Seattle really stresses me out. And like, I'm folding socks. <laughs> like, I hate folding socks. But that's what I'm doing because I have a nervous energy. And so I'm trying to rush this morning because I have to go and pick Abby up from school. She's really like starting to miss school. I have all of her socks and her sock bin is holding you guys up. <laughs> So, um, she's missing a lot of school, even the attendant at the office. She's like, is she coming back to school today? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, she'll come back to school today. Maybe she can see on her record she did not come back to school yesterday. So, that's what our goal is to have Abby go back to school today. But, she's gonna go get her consult for her wisdom teeth. But, I'm just, I'm, sh I'm shaking. <laughs> I don't get nervous to go do stuff. I don't know. You know, new doctor, new area. Ugh. Okay. This is what I do when I get nervous. I'm so hot right now, but we gotta go out to the bus. So, wish me luck. Okay, I'm just pulling up to get Abby from high school, and <laughs> so frustrated. My life is just chaos right now. My friend was trying to go out with me during the week, and she was like, okay, pick a day, pick a time. Let's make it, you know, two hours out of our day to go and spend some time together. And I was like, I literally don't know when I can do that. Like, I don't know what two hour block of time I have because of all of these appointments and it's totally fine it's what i have to do to take care of my kids right but every single appointment that i make i have to then reschedule something else because like if i make an appointment for you know abby to go to a an um, orthopedic specialist that's more important i had to reschedule a dentist appointment that was supposed to be yesterday that's easy to reschedule so i rescheduled that for next week then today I, what was it? Someone, oh, then the scan place called and asked if me and Ashley could both do a scan, like the ones that we volunteer for, for next week. And they wanted me and Ashley to do one back to back. And it's her half day, and so I was like, okay, that can work. And then I looked at my calendar, and it's fine for Ashley to do it, but not me at the same time, because she has her therapy appointment. So I was like, nope, you gotta pick another, another day. But I can do Ashley that day, totally fine. So then she picks a new day for me to do it. And they pay a lot. They're doing the heart, which is technically the chest, which is invasive, so it pays more. So I agreed to do it, but then I look at my calendar and I have a blood donation appointment already scheduled. So then I have to log on and reschedule my blood appointment. <laughs> I can't, I can't with this. Like every single time I schedule an appointment, I have to change something else. <sighs> So I feel bad. I told my friend, I was like, don't hope for me in May. Just put me out of your 
mind for May. This is when we always play games with on Saturday night, which they have to cancel it this week because they have so many things for their daughter who is graduating. So it's just crazy. I have another message. All right, so I'm waiting for Abby. I'll be with you in a bit. shaking. I don't know why that makes me so nervous. The 520 bridge is not that big a deal. I don't know why I get so nervous. And then we're coming in here into the parking lot and <laughs> they're like, we play the license play game with the kids and people bring their kids to this hospital from all over the country. California, Texas. She was like, Ohio, Nebraska, <laughs> Idaho, California. She was like slapping me the whole time we were coming through this parking garage trying to find a spot, which there's no spots. And uh, anyway, a score on license plates in this parking garage, but let's head in. Super great appointment. It was just a consult, but um, I'll fill you in with that in a minute. I'm gonna get Abby some lunch and get her back to school. So, now we have to go back. <laughs> and I think there's no toll going back this direction because she wants to go to Chick-fil-A or Wendy's, you said? Yeah. So, so I do need to take the toll going back over. <laughs> it is cold, it started to rain. So I'm gonna put you guys down and fight the Seattle rain traffic heading back home. Sorry, I'm freezing. I've got all my ID badges and stickers on my shirt still. All right, we're going to talk about Abby here in a second. Um, we got back from the hospital, took Abby to the school after we went to Chick fil A, and I had only eaten half my fries and my drink, and uh, three of my friends now work at the middle school that's right by Abby's high school. And if you know teachers these days, it's really, really difficult, and my friend is the principal. And so it's just, actually none of them are teachers. <laughs> they just work there. But it's just really stressful these days, and so I always kind of just check in on them. And I'm like, what do you need? What do we need for a pick-me-up? Or anyway, lately they haven't, oh no, we're fine, I don't need anything. But, <laughs> one of them um, I need lunch <laughs> I need help today it's a bad day and so I, one of them had, had responded to me fast and so she's like I really need lunch can you please go and get me something and I'll Venmo you and I was like fine and I was like I don't need to eat my Chick-fil-a if that's tempting because I know it's far away and you know we don't get it very often and she's like are you kidding me <laughs> she's like yes I will take your Chick-fil-a so I was planning on doing that and then someone else called me back and she was like, I really want a blue raspberry slushy from McDonald's. I was like, I got you. And then someone else said, get, get the other person that took your Chick-fil-A, get her a Coke Zero from McDonald's because she really loves it from the fountain just like you. It's a thing. We've all established that. And you can't get Coke Zero through the drive-thru but the, their inside is open now. And so I was like, you know what? We're gonna sacrifice in the pouring rain and we're gonna go inside and order so that I can get this friend a Coke Zero from the fountain, which is the best. And then they changed their soda fountain machine. Oh, that was thunder. We don't get thunder here. That was weird. We do not get thunder here very often. During the summer when you kinda had those warm fronts come in, Ooh, we don't get thunder. That was strange. They changed their soda machine. And it no longer has like all the options for all the drinks. You only have a few cho choices for Coke. And Coke Zero was not one of them. I wonder if the diet, oh, I should have checked the diet option. 
Oh, I really hope that the diet option didn't have the Coke Zero option. I'm gonna be really sad. Anyway, I just had to make the executive decision on getting her just a regular Coke, because I know that, we already know, Coke Zero is not the same as Diet Coke, and I, I know her well enough to know that it is not the same for her either. Oh, my drinks are all gonna fall over. I've got them all propped up. <laughs> got the drinks down here. I can't even see them. Anyway, I'm gonna put my camera down now that I'm driving again, and there's thunder and lightning out there now. Um, take this lunch back to them. I've gotten Costco gas. I'm going home. Oh, it's doing it again. Guys, my cute little new desk stand is the perfect camera stand. <gasps> I didn't even know it was gonna be that good. I still get some light from my window, not the best, but I gotta get going on some stuff. Um, and I wanted to give you a little update on Abby as I start to work right here. Got a banana. I didn't get my lunch today. <laughs> as you saw, I gave it away to my friend. They had a crazy day at the middle school and it all like kind of like snowballed all at the same time and none of them got to go to their lunch. And anyway, so that was fun to go help them. So for Abby, I don't know really how much I explained. She needs her wisdom teeth out. That's what the consult was. But, and we're gonna go ahead and go with that. Um, it takes about three weeks for insurance to process the paperwork and improve the surgery. So I don't have as much of that white glare. But uh, it takes about three weeks for them to approve that um, procedure to be done, the surgery. And then he's like, honestly, really, it's probably closer to four weeks. But if you get, I'm sorry, I'm like all sweaty. He's like, if you get to four weeks and they haven't called you to schedule, then call us and we'll, we'll figure out what the delay is. But he did put a rush order on it because Abby's in pain. And, but the, the really cool thing is that, well, it's not cool. Abby has to have jaw surgery. I have talked about it a little bit, but she, my, it's genetic. My dad had jaw surgery, my brother and my niece all have the same jaw. There's probably more, honestly, more grandkids that are probably gonna have to have the same um, surgery. Their jaw is not in the right place and the teeth are not in the right place. So they had to have their jaw broken and reset and then wired shut. There are new procedures now that they don't have to wire you shut, but we'll just kind of cross that bridge when we come to it. But that can't happen until she has all of her child teeth and bones fully grown, which so it, she'll have to wait till she's 17 or 18, which is in like two and a half years, three and a, two and a half to three and a half years which is unfortunate because she's in a lot of pain. And that's what prompted us to start the process of getting her wisdom teeth out, to take some of that pressure from her jaw that really, really hurts uh, from being in the wrong place. So when we met with the doctor today, he immediately was like, you have been to the hospital a lot lately. He saw on her chart and he was like, I'm seeing what medication you just started to take. And wow, are you okay? Like a dentist, like he didn't mean to like ask her. I'm gonna move you again. He was like, I don't like how much pain you're in. And I would like to talk to you about trying to get you motivated for this surgery coming up. And let's talk about that. And he was like, do you have a surgeon lined up for that surgery? And I said, no, I don't. But my orthodontist has their surgeon that they use and recommend. And we'll probably, we were just gonna go with that. And he was like, nope, you're coming here. <laughs> It's like, okay. And he's like, if your surgery goes through with your insurance for the wisdom teeth, it will go through for this jaw surgery. It is medically necessary for her to get this surgery done. So I would like to do it for you. I would like to do the surgery. Insurance will cover it regardless. We've already determined our insurance will be fully covered. Um, it's just a matter of finding the location in the surgeon to actually do it. And he just talked to Abby and he was just like, I don't want you to be scared for that surgery. I want you to think more about what do you want to look like after this surgery? Because whether you want to have it happen or not, your jaw and your face line is going to change. That's the, the nature of this surgery is that you look different when you're done with the surgery. And he was like, what I always talk to you about my, with my patients is what other cosmetic surgery do you want on your face? Like with your smile, your jaw, your cheekbones. Is there something that you don't like? Something that I can fix with your chin? Something I can do while I'm already in there? Um, and, if, and as it relates to this jaw area, I'll fix it. All covered under this designated surgery whatever you want to do. And he showed us pictures of before and after with girls that are her age, well, that would be her age when she has the surgery and they have a very similar palette and the surgery before and after would be very similar. And at first she's like, well, I don't think I'll look that different. I don't, I'm okay with how I look. I don't, I don't worry about that. And then she saw the before and after and this one girl had like a very square jaw. And then after the surgery, she had like this beautiful, like heart shaped face. And it was very like thin and narrowed out 
like chin line and she was like oh that's beautiful and he was like that's what this surgery does and if I can if you like that kind of a look I can even taper it more I can make it really whatever you want it to be so spend the next two years talking to me as we have like consults over the time and we'll try and pinpoint how you want to look and I just I love that the doctor took some extra time because it's a big surgery it's a big a step to take for a girl and to like change how they look and he's just he was just so nice to her and just so cautious and had the right words and he's like you're beautiful the way you are um I but I am gonna change your jawline so let's just talk about it what do you, what do you want it to look like so more than just the t the conversation about her wisdom teeth I just I fell in love with this doctor he was just so good and I have no qualms with going with him in two years or so when we have to start with this surgery process for her but I am also looking forward to him being her doctor to get her wisdom teeth out <laughs> and we don't have well we will I have to ugh, like we don't have any appointments now we're done but no you have to get her physical therapy appointment set which I should probably call a hospital right now and try and start to arrange that um, unfortunately the six weeks she has to do physical therapy is perfect timing to then be done with school <laughs> it's like, so I'm trying to do the, those appointments after school and uh, Sorry, Jason just texted me. Oh, goodness sake. Riff at work with the employees. So PT appointments we're trying to do for her after school. And this surgery will probably be lined up with a happening after school is out. And hopefully either more than a week before my sister's wedding. No, it won't be. We'll have to do it a week after my sister's wedding. Because um, we're leaving to go to that before school is out. So that is the plan. Poor girl has been through a lot. But we have a very clear path of how to get her out of pain. And even the dentist today today he said that he knows what medication she's on because he can see her chart and he said okay by the time we have the, su the surgery scheduled for your wisdom teeth I need to you to tell me if you're still on that current medication and and tell me what your pain threshold is because I may or may not give you an art when you're coming out of surgery because you may be already on that kind of pain medication that will be well enough to help you not be in pain just he's already thinking of things that are very specific to Abby and I just really appreciate like people that hear her and he Oh, it just it makes me emotional because who wants your kid to be in pain? Just, it's been a long day and this kid she doesn't complain you guys She has gone for six months in pain and, and doesn't complain about it on a daily basis She just doesn't it's only when I ask her or I ask her to do something or go somewhere and she's like I can't I physically can't do that and that's when she tells me how much pain she's in oh, I'm just so glad we're getting some answers and oh, sorry my husband keeps texting me let me go talk him off the ledge because squabbles with employees are a little difficult to deal with and sometimes you need a wife to bring you down off the ledge <laughs> hang on I say hi <laughs> he just got home but Chelsea you came home from school today and asked if you could do chores around the house because you wanted to save up for something yeah you want to tell dad what that something is am I telling dad or the camera both two birds with one stone Hi. Tell us what you want to save up for. Um, let me pause my show. Okay. Um, uh, like the Apple Pen and the iPad thing. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Something like that? So you can draw and do stuff with it? Yeah, so that it just kind of helps me do more. You just it. Okay. Uh, yeah, that'd yeah, be a, a great thing, thing to... That'd be a really good thing. Told her it might be a long time <laughs> to save up. She wanted to do some chores and stuff, so, and then some scans, so that could earn her some money faster. Cool. So we'll just see how long it takes her to, uh, save up for... I was showing about a month-ish. <laughs> <laughs> <'Cause... laughs> yeah. Okay, um, well... There's a fine. lot of chores. Our house is going to be very we're clean. We're, we're here to support you. You can do anything you put your mind to, kiddo. Especially I mean, you. Yeah. Yep. Shush. <laughs> yeah, you're the only one who can put your own mind to it, right? See? Mom agrees. Dad's just knowing he doesn't do the same. What are you talking about? Yeah, I do. <laughs> so Ashley has something fun she wants to do. We still have to try and get you in. Do you want to tell everyone what you're going to maybe try out for? Not try out for. You just have to register for. Wait, if I register, does it mean I... You they have a lot of people that want to do it, so we have to make sure we get in. Can, can I sign up now? You want to sign up now? Yeah. We have to have Daddy pay for it. <laughs> yeah, we have to pay Let's do it. Okay, tell them what you want to sign up for. Cheerleading. 
<laughs> rookie cheerleading. It's the kids cheerleading for ages third grade to eighth grade. I just made it. If I was in second grade, I would be. And they cheer at like the, the junior f f uh, yeah, games. I just, wanted, just like. She wants to be a part of something. I also wanted to do cheerleading, uh, but I never really, that before. I never really thought of it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's really cute. Um, I had seen the post. Uh, so two of Chelsea's teachers from. Well, one of them was her teacher, and the other one was yeah, the other is her best friend. So from Chelsea was in third grade when she had her. Um, and then Chelsea did Girls on the Run with this same teacher and absolutely loved it. And then that teacher and her best friend went off to a different school to do something else. And now they che they coach the cheer team for these younger kids. And <laughs> it's so cute. Um, it's a little bit expensive, but she has actually has been asking, like we said, for some kind of a club or a group or an activity to give her something to do every week. And this one is starting this summer, starting in August. And it's solid. It practices every single day, right, until school starts. And then it's twice a, or, yeah, every single day for four days. And then once school starts, then it's twice a week. And at night, which is nice, we still get summer, summer activities. And then she can do the practice at night. But I think she's very excited to sign up for it. We'll be we'll see. to go to the beach, though. Huh? We'll be hiring to go to the beach. And oh, I think it'll be fine. Day. Yeah, I think it'll be fine. So we're going to sign off with you guys. I am very tired. I did have a little nap right here. It was quite nice. I literally tucked myself in. I was like, I'm not pretending. I am laying down, getting a blanket, turning the lights off, took a solid nap, but only an hour, hour and a half maybe. So I've had dinner. Have you had dinner? We don't talk about Bruno. What? It's okay. We don't talk about food. <laughs> We're going to sign off with you guys. Take care and we'll see you guys next time.